Hey, shifters, welcome back to another podcast. Elizabeth Scala here, your host. And really quickly to orient you to what the heck is going on on the Your Next Shift landscape. So the Your Next Shift podcast, our nursing career podcast, is the weekly podcast we put out week after week. That's weekly, right, guys? On Wednesdays, where we interview nurses from across the country, from across the specialty, from across the job spectrum. I mean, they're in academia research, clinical nursing, entrepreneurship, all over the place, right? This is a mini-series, a spinoff of the Your Next Shift podcast, and this is specially called Make the Shift. Why is that? Well, I've interviewed nurses from across the country who have wonderful and unique information that I went through my list of podcast episodes from the past, and I'm bringing them back on to talk about more context, because you know, those original episodes, I limit them to 25 minutes or less for you, the listener, to digest that information quick and easy. And now I want to build some of that out, expand it further. And a lot of these topics are helping you, the nurse listener, to make a shift, to actually take some action and implement some change. So we're back again with Donnie. And Donnie, Before we get to the content, I will just kind of orient the listeners here. So shifters, we did record one, this is one of five, one episode prior. So if you'd like to go backwards, go backwards a week in time, and I'll have the link in the show notes to the opening interview where Donnie and I um, discussed, you know, what health coaching is, how health coaching and nursing is such a similar and easy bridge to gap there, and kind of the beginning concepts related to health coaching. This interview, we're going to dive into some new topics. So as I said, you can go backwards and soon you can go forwards when you get to next week's content. So Donnie, welcome back to the Make the Shift podcast series. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited for today's information that you're going to share with us because, oh my goodness, today's healthcare climate. And I know people might find this podcast next year, several years, so things may change, but healthcare is always changing. And today's healthcare climate, that's a doozy. My goodness. So tell us some of the most recent challenges that are costing both the healthcare system and its consumers, not only money, but honestly, our very lives. Yeah. Well, yes, the healthcare system is constantly changing, and I am working very, very hard to change the the trajectory, but I don't expect that in the next year, two, three, that it's going to change too much in the positive direction. Yes, a couple of years from now, it might be a little bit different, but unless something drastically changes right now, I don't expect it to be much better. And that is actually why I do what I do as a health coach. And currently, the CDC has reported that the leading cause of death is chronic diseases. And what happens is that chronic diseases are mostly preventable. And so what that means is that people are dying, we're spending a lot of money, and it doesn't have to be that way. This is true. This is true. I'm, I'm sitting here nodding emphatically, shifters, because, oh, by and by, we're also recording video, which you cannot see. I, but Donnie, I always am very transparent with the shifters out there telling them the ins and outs of the podcast behind the scenes. So I was nodding emphatically because I'm just thinking, gosh, people are going to die. It's preventable. And we're spending all of this money on things that are kind of broken and, and the chronic illness situation. So which nurses do work with patients who have chronic illness? You know, we work with them on a daily basis. And I am sure, as I know from observing nurses in the hospital job that I work at, that it can be super frustrating to continue to see patients day in, day out, you know, without making real strides forward in their care. What does a health coach do differently that allows patients to actually make change that sticks? Well, as we talked about in the previous uh, session, nurses have so many responsibilities that they don't have as much time to spend with their patients. And what happens is we know that according to one study, 86% of chronic diseases are lifestyle driven and that the four top behaviors that drive these chronic diseases is 
inadequate exercise, poor nutrition, smoking, and excessive alcohol, right? And so we know that we need to help people make changes in terms of the inadequate exercise, which means they now need to incorporate time into their day. And as a nurse at the bedside or whatever the role of the nurse may be, um, they may not have a chance to connect with that person on a more regular basis to find out, hey, we had come up with a plan last week. Are you following through? In at the bedside, we follow the nursing process, right? Where we do an assessment and we create a plan and then we implement and then we evaluate. And when we see our patients at the hospital or at a doctor's office or whatever, we don't get to see them back several times for a couple of months to a year. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't that evaluation going on, right? We can't course correct. And what health coaches do, number one, it's their primary focus. They don't have a million other responsibilities. So they're able to keep that more frequent contact to come up with the plan, evaluate, is it working, and course correct sooner so that we can actually make the changes that we're hoping to make. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm sure shifters out there listening are thinking, Donnie, you're in my head. You're at my job. You're right. I don't have time to be with the patient, first of all, as long as I'd like to be, to maybe even talk about some of these healthy behavior changes. And then you're so right. You know, we might never see that person again, depending on what our role is about. So it would be hard to know if what we were kind of and we talked about this in the previous session as well, telling the patient what to do instead of kind of facilitating change with them. So we don't really know the outcome. And that, that certainly is a dissatisfier. You know, in my work with burnout, if we don't feel like our job is meaningful and we walk away with the fact that what I'm doing is making a difference, that's a whole component of burnout. So my goodness, I, I mean, this is totally making sense to me. And, and so we're talking about behavior change and the fact that the person in front of us needs to make some kind of healthy behavior change. So a coach helps with lifestyle behavior change. Can you give us an example from a coaching client, you know, keeping confidentiality for sure, that you worked with? Tell us a story about that example first, and then I'll have a, I have some thoughts about following up on that too. Yeah. Well, actually, my very second client that I had, she was 64 years old, actually a nursing instructor. Never really kind of put those pieces together until just now. Um, a nursing instructor that had type 2 diabetes. And we started working together. And because of her work, she didn't have much time to eat at the right intervals. She didn't have any energy. And because she was about 70 to 80 pounds overweight, you know, she had a lot of joint pains and so forth. She, could, she couldn't be as active. So all the things that we knew she needed to do, we had to kind of work together to identify how we can get around those barriers. And by working together, she actually started eating the right food at the right time in the right intervals. And she actually started walking a little bit more. She was so excited when she was able to bend down and pick something off the ground instead of using those little pincher claws, right? Because she had that mobility. And that was so rewarding to me because number one, she was my very second client. And because number two, by the end of her first month, she had lost something like maybe 12 to 14 pounds. And because of that change, because of the changes she made in her lifestyle, she actually, her provider cut her metformin dosing in half. It went from 1,000 milligrams a day to 500 and completely eliminated her insulin. Mm. And it's just amazing what the human body will do when we offer it the right circumstances right and when we take care of it and that's what happened with this with this one client now i had been a nurse for 16 years at that point and in those 16 years i had never been a part of somebody coming off of medications mm. i had never been a part of that kind of solution and that felt amazing well that's what i was going to ask i'm like you talked about the empowerment you've described to us that you've followed you know, this woman through to an outcome. So you've gotten to the evaluation process of nursing. Speak to more about that feeling. Like, how did that just feel? How does it feel even thinking about it today to share in that outcome? You know, I have long sleeves on today, but I can tell you I have goosebumps just talking about it. It is an incredible feeling to offer and deliver hope, not just to talk about it, not just to inspire 
mm-hmm. but to empower and deliver on it. And that's simply because I was able to identify what was most important to her, help her get past some barriers, and then celebrate her success. Mm-hmm. And every single day you have to pinch me because I get paid to do that. <laughs> right. I was going to say, my goodness, Donnie, you are speaking to make the shift, <laughs> the mini series here. I'm like, oh my goodness, you taking action as a health coach, you being there to facilitate that person, she taking action too, you guys seeing outcomes together. How satisfying, how rewarding, how awesome it must feel to be a nurse in the health coaching shoes that you walk in. So imagine being a nurse and seeing that patient through. Goodness, shifters, think about it. Imagine being a nurse and seeing your patient through to a successful outcome. So I'm sitting here like, sign me up, you know? (laughs) Can you tell us more then, Donnie, how the shifters listening can contact you, get started today? Well, it was an amazing feeling for me to experience that. And I am very passionate about empowering other nurses to experience that same level of excitement. And if this is something that they're interested in moving forward on in making that shift, they just need to go to elizabethscala.com forward slash health coaching, no spaces, no dashes, and we'll schedule an appointment to connect. Excellent. Awesome. Well, shifters, do not worry. Do not fear. We still got three more episodes ahead of us with Donnie. And so Donnie, thank you for your time today. And we look forward to speaking to you again real soon.